All right, so this is just going about answering my own curiosities. I wanted to have a look at some of the 325 narrow curve chains. I have used them in the past, but it was around, I think 2008, 2009. At the time I gave up on it because I found the really narrow curve led to the chains, the bars getting pinched a lot. And it was a bit frustrating in the type of stuff I was doing at the time. Curiosity's got the better of me, so let's have a look. What I measured for all of this is just the kerf of the cutter. So what I did was I had the bar in a vise, put the chain in it, used two pieces of just uh, 25 by five flat bar, stack them at either side of the chain, put a clamp on it, and measured the thickness in between at the top of the cutter. So we're measuring the overall kerf that the chain cuts. Let's go through it. Everything on the left here is 325 narrow kerf up the top. That's some 325 50 gauge that I had, some 58 gauge 325 I had, 38 in a mix of gauges. To start off with, the easiest thing to compare is the two bars because they're the same brand. That is a 16 inch K095 mount 058 bar. That's an 050 specifically for Husqvarna calls it pixel. Um, everyone else calls it narrow curve. So that's specifically made for that. Overall, the actual shapes and size, if you lay them on top of each other, is identical. The difference is in width is 0.6 of a millimeter. Everything I'm going to talk about is in millimeters. I can't convert it to, uh, to freedom units very easily. I'm not that good at it. I can do bigger measurements, but not little ones. So there's 0.6 of a mil difference between the actual thickness. There's a, about 90 grams of weight difference between them. Keep in mind, this is a 50 gauge bar that's specifically made for narrow curve. So it generally is narrower, uh, narrower than a regular 50 gauge. So we'll look at the chains. The still RS Pro, 23 RS Pro, still is selling it as, as a narrow curve. Both it and the 23RM Pro have an overall kerf of 5.9 millimeters. I'll do a video on these two later. Trying to identify which is which, just at arm's length, is damn near impossible. If you pick up like a 404 or 3 h chain, you can tell what's full chisel, semi chisel, a chisel from arm's length distance. It's pretty obvious. These things is tricky. I'm gonna take a wild guess here. I mean, I can't test them at the minute. The weather's just way too hot. I'll take a guess that that RM is going to be a very fast cutting chain. It will be very close to this because it is a very well designed semi chisel. So that's them two at 5.9. And in the Husky version of a narrow curve is this SP23G. I've got an overall curve on that of 6.1 millimeters. The Oregon 20 LGX has overall kerf of 6.7 millimeters. So that is just a 325050 regular issue chain, not a narrow kerf. Then I use some 58 gauge chains. I'm limited as to what I've got that's new. So Oregon 21 BPX is an 058 gauge semi chisel at 6.9 mil. The Husky SG35 is the same at 6.9. If you have them two chains next to each other, you'll swear they're still making them in the same factory. They look very, very similar. The Carlton KLX, which is a full chisel 058 gauge, got a kerf of 6.7 millimeters. I believe it's called K2EP, which is old Carlton uh, semi chisel, 6.8. It's a strange looking thing. It looks more like a chipper with how rounded those corners are. Just out of interest, I gathered up some new 3 8 chains that I had to get the overall curve. 75 CL, it was an 063 gauge full, uh, full chisel square ground chain, 6.8 mil. Its cutters are based on the older LGX style. The 73 EXL, which is a 58 gauge uh, Oregon full chisel, 6.6. .6. And Husky C85 is 6.6 .6 as well. I would like to see I would have liked to have had some regular uh, full chisel 325 in the still to see the difference. 
I have seen some documentation. I've seen a photo on the internet. My measurements are thin compared to what they are actually claiming. I've gone through this twice now because I realized a couple of mistakes I'd made on the way when I changed the, the height that I had the chain sitting between the two bars and it was making a bit of a difference. So I went back and did it again. These are all consistent across what I've had. I've rechecked it a couple of times now and I keep getting that consistent result. But I don't have anything to compare that to. I can directly compare that SP33 and the S35. Even though they're different gauges, the only difference really, if you had a S33, would be below the tie straps. It's only in the lower section of that drive link on them. So they're a pretty good comparison to have. So we can look at that and say there's about 0.8 of a millimeter uh, narrower for the narrow curve. If I had one of these that was worn back further, I'd be tempted to take it all the way back and see how thin it actually becomes at the end of life. I have a feeling that 6.1 is probably occurring around the two thirds wear mark. So naturally your chain is gonna dry, go past that point at some stage. By the same token, these are all going to become narrower as they work back. Overall curve difference between 325 and 38 is not really not much. You'll see the 325 semi chisels because of the shape of that side plate and needs that curve. They're actually running slightly wider than the full chisel 38. I don't have any semi chisel 38s that are new. I do have some 404, which I probably should have measured for this. It's generally about one millimeter wider in the curve. It is a fair difference. But yeah, I don't actually have an opportunity to cut anything with these. We're going to have some difficulties because these are set up. So the Oregon 20 LGX and the two steel chains are set up at 62 drive links to suit a Oregon speed cut bar. And the rest of this stuff, I can run on the same saw using these two bars, but these are 66 drive links. So I'm not sure what to do. I might run what I can on these two bars on one saw. After I've tried it with that, I might break the SP33G down so it can try. I would like to see it try against the um, 23RM Pro. I do have some Oregon 95TXL that I've ordered and I should have in a day or two. But that's what I've got so far. I'll keep digging into this when I get some spare time. Hopefully I'll be cutting with these soon, but it's the time of year where all our snakes are very active and the weather's too hot and you need to worry about setting fire to everything. So it's a bit hit and miss when I can cut. And you really need to try and pick the right days. That's it for now. I'll measure up a heap more and see what I can come up with.